Welcome back to my channel. I am Eloho. Happy Black History Month. Happy Blackity Black. Black, blackity, black, black, blackity, hey, black, black. I see you, black, blackity, black history month. So, this month, I'm going to be integrating content about black American heroes that many of us did not learn about in history class. Okay, black Americans have such a rich and dynamic history, and there are so many heroes that have unsung stories. But have no fear, Liddy Lowe is here. So before I share the story of this impeccable black woman, I would love to share the story of these impeccable black made products. The Nutty Tree is an organic skincare company dedicated to naturally improving your skin with traditional African essentials. These are some must have products that I use on a daily basis. African black soap is known to heal common skin problems such as eczema, acne, and more. This soap is antibacterial, improves skin texture, it's moisturizing, and prevents premature fine lines and wrinkles, aka the reason why black don't crack, honey. The exfoliating sponge has been a staple in many African households. Its nylon fibers removes dead skin and can be used on sensitive skin types as well. You can choose between the turmeric facial bar or the turmeric scrub. They both work amazing. The turmeric scrub helps with acne scars and with acne, and it can be used as a mask. Finish up with some treatments and then on to your body butters, baby. You want to smell good, honey? You want to be soft and moisturized and glowing? You have so many options to choose from and they literally all smell amazing. Now, don't just take my word for it. Read up on some reviews. Follow The Nutty Tree on Instagram. Use my discount code ELOHO during checkout and tell them that I sent you. On March 2nd, 1955, a school full of colored students talked about the injustices they were experiencing daily under the segregated Jim Crow laws. It was Negro History Month at the time, and they had been studying black leaders such as Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. On her way home, Claudette Colvin, a 15-year-old student, got on the bus with three friends, paid her fare, and sat at the front. A white woman got on board and her classmates got up, but Claudette refused to give up her seat. When asked repeatedly to get up, she told the driver that it was her constitutional right and she had just as much right to that seat as the white woman. The bus driver called the police, who also asked Claudette to get up. Crying and scared, she refused to get up. She said, it is my constitutional right to sit in this seat. And the officers put handcuffs on her and arrested her. When interviewed in 2004, Claudette says she remembers the moment the jail door closed. I got scared and panic came over me and I started crying and then I started saying the Lord's Prayer. Claudette sat in that cell alone for a few hours until her mother came with the family pastor and bailed her out of jail. Nine months before Rosa Parks, in the same city, on the same bus system, hauled off the bus, handcuffed and thrown in jail, and no one really knew. Colvin also challenged the law in court. She was one of five plaintiffs in the court case Browder v. Gale, and during the case, she described her arrest. In 1956, the U.S. District Court of Alabama and Montgomery declared laws mandating public bus segregation as unconstitutional. After her arrest, local leaders considered using her example as justification for a citywide bus boycott, but she was quote-unquote too young and too emotional to serve as a rallying figure for what was certain to be a turbulent movement. Colvin became pregnant later that summer by an older man and confirmed the sentiments that she was the wrong person for the movement. Colvin gave birth to a son, Raymond, in March of 1956. His skin was noticeably light, and people frequently assumed that the father was Elliot Klein, a very prominent white male in the Montgomery community who was known for sympathizing with black folks. Colvin was branded a troublemaker by many in her community. She withdrew from college and struggled in the local environment. She later moved to New York City in 1958 because she had difficulty finding and keeping work following her participation in the federal court case that overturned bus segregation. In her new community in NYC, Black folks weren't talking about integrating. They were focused on Black ownership, Black power, in the words of Malcolm X, leaving little to no room for Claudette and her bravery back in Montgomery. When asked why everyone thinks of Rosa Parks and knows so little about her, Claudette says the NAACP and all the other Black organizations felt Parks would be a good icon because she was an adult who had the right hair texture and skin color. They didn't think teenagers would be reliable, and folks that looked like Rosa Parks were associated with middle class. Parks was a secretary of the NAACP, 
She was well-known and well-respected. Parks is best known for her pivotal role in the Montgomery bus boycott. The United States Congress has called her the first lady of civil rights and the mother of the freedom movement. In the early 2000s, Troy State University opened a Rosa Parks Museum in Montgomery to honor the town's place in civil rights history. Roy White, who was in charge of most of the project, asked Colvin if she would like to appear in a video to tell her story. But Colvin refused. She said they've already called it the Rosa Parks Museum, so they've already made up their minds what the story is. Colvin has often said she is not angry that she did not get more recognition. Rather, she's disappointed. She said she felt as if she was getting her Christmas in January rather than the 25th. I don't think there's room for many more icons. I think that history only has room enough for certain, you know, how many icons can you choose? So, you know, I think you compare history, like most historians say Columbus discovered America, and it was already populated. But they don't say that Columbus discovered America. They should say, for the European people, that is, you know, their discovery of the new world. Colvin and her family continued to fight for recognition for her action. In 2016, the Smithsonian Institution and the National Museum of African American History and Culture were challenged by Colvin and her family, who asked that Colvin be given more prominent mention in the history of the civil rights movement. There is a section dedicated to Rosa Parks, which Colvin does not want taken away, but her family's goal is to get the historical record right and for officials to include Colvin's part of history. Colvin was not invited officially for the formal dedication of the museum, which opened to the public in September 2016. Reverend Joseph Rembrandt later said, If nobody did anything for Claudette Colvin in the past, why don't we do something for her right now? He contacted Montgomery Councilman Charles Jenright and Tracy Larklin, and in 2017, the council passed a resolution for a proclamation honoring Colvin. March 2nd named Claudette Colvin Day in Montgomery. Mayor Todd Strange presented the proclamation, and when speaking of Colvin, he said, She was an early foot soldier in our civil rights, and we did not want this opportunity to go by without declaring March 2nd as Claudette Colvin Day. To thank her for her leadership in the modern-day civil rights movement, Rembrandt said, I know people have heard her name before, but I just thought we should have a day to celebrate her. Colvin could not attend the proclamation due to health concerns. At the age of 81, Colvin is now a retired nurse aide, and though the history books may not always tell it, she was definitely a pioneer of the 1950s civil rights movement. So let me know down in the comment section if you ever heard of Claudette Colvin. Let me know if you've heard of Rosa Parks, which I'm sure you have. Also, let me know if there are other heroes and stars and Black leaders and activists that you would like to know a little bit more about, some unsung heroes that we should celebrate and highlight this Black History Month. I learned about her story some years back, um, but it really made me think of all the other African-American heroes and honestly, just everyday people who bucked against the system, who said, nah, like, I'm not going to get up or nah, you're not going to treat me like this, you know, and they were named nameless and faceless and we never learned of their stories. And this was a completely different time, but it's really interesting that Claudette called out colorism during that time. And I think in today's society, we talk about colorism as it pertains to preference or dating, right? But we also see that colorism also affects visibility. You know, she wasn't able to be the leader. She wasn't able to be the face of a movement that she started because of the way she looked, because of her age, and then because of pregnancy. So that's, that's you know... <laughs> you, you can't guess like that just saying but yes let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and happy blackity black black blackity black black blackity black history month later all right ladies now i got some great news Jada's Luxury Beauty Supply has partnered with Coco Black Naturals and have restocked their number one product. For defined natural curls on all hair textures, try Coco Black's Curling Custard Cream. This product was developed in Ghana and has been selling off the shelves worldwide. And with Jada's Luxury Beauty Supply now stocking these products, you can go right to jadasluxurybeautysupply.com and purchase your own. 
Jada's Luxury is the only Black-owned beauty supply in Hempstead, New York. And with Black women being the number one consumers of these products, it's important that we shop with other Black women who understand and cater to our wants and needs. And so for your everyday beauty needs, visit jadasluxurybeautysupply.com or if you're in the area, stop in and tell her I sent you.